Hey everyone, welcome in to a, another daily editorial here on the KE Report. Corey and Chad here chatting with Christopher Aaron, founder of iGold Advisor, as well as senior editor over at the Gold Eagle website. Now, Christopher, we're going to dive into a couple gold charts. We'll probably talk about some of the gold stocks and compare it all to what the U.S. markets might do all heading into next year. We've been chatting with you off mic for a little while here, and you've been outlining this big picture scenario for gold and the markets and then filtering down into the gold stocks next year where they could both gold and general equities hit all time highs, but then a key decision point would come. So can you break down at least that first step here? Why you think both gold and general equities could go to all time highs next year? Yeah. So thank you once again for having me on the show, guys. Let's talk about big picture update here. We've seen over the last 18 months, gold and the stock market moving in lockstep with one another. Generally speaking, month in and month out, when we have gold prices higher, we have the stock market higher. When we have gold prices lower, the stock market is falling at the same time. And there's strong evidence for this when we look at the Dow to gold ratio. This is simply the number of ounces of gold that it requires to purchase one share in all 30 companies in the Dow Jones Industrial Average, really this thing has been moving sideways since 2015. So can you imagine, even as gold prices have nearly doubled, stock prices have nearly doubled as well over the last eight and a half years. So we have a sideways movement in the Dow to gold ratio as both of these markets have doubled. By the way, this has never happened before in the history of freely traded gold, where you have gold advancing amidst a a sideways movement in the Dow to gold ratio. So we're living through something extraordinary here. When we look at where gold is right now, we've had three attempts at the 2075 level over the last three years. Nice $200 spike over the last couple of months following the... uh, attacks on Israel. And here we are once again, just below that 2000 figure. Now, I will say that the idea that this has been some sort of big picture, triple top in gold, I never want to use the word never in the financial markets. I stay away from that. But I would simply say when we look at long term charts, it would be extremely, extremely rare for a market to make a long-term triple top in this kind of way. If you put a gun to my head and say, what's your best answer, Christopher? Is this a long-term top or is this thing going to try to make another run? I would say absolutely going to try to break out to the upside. There are very rarely these long-term triple tops. So here we are. By the way, gold has never in its history made a monthly close above 2000 in the spot market. All these attempts at 2,075, not once has it ever made a monthly close above 2,000. Here we are trading at 1981, and we've got 14 days left in this month of November. Could this be the month? I think when we see the monthly close above 2,000, that's going to let us know that we are one to two months away from gold breaking out to the upside. Now, When we switch over and we look at the stock market, let's talk about the S&P 500 here for a minute. I have a target based on the base that the S&P 500 formed. A basing pattern is simply a bottoming pattern that happened after the 2020 decline. I have a target based on the measurement of that base in late 2022 of 4,900 on the S&P 500. S&P 500 is, right now is trading just above 4,500. And that target is valid until proven otherwise. So what this means is that I expect, based on the bottoming pattern in stocks, I expect stocks to make a new all-time high. The previous all-time high for the S&P 500 going back to late 2021 was just above 4,800. So I expect there to be a new nominal all-time high for the stock market when we look into calendar year 2024. And remember back to the Dow to gold ratio, gold has been moving in lockstep with the Dow here for the last eight years. 
we look at gold in isolation, very rarely that there's going to be a triple top. I expect gold to make a new nominal all-time high as well in calendar year 2024. However, once we see those breakouts, both in gold and the stock market, what I am suggesting to you here right now is that only one of those moves is going to be legitimate. One of the moves is going to be a final wave that represents a significant multi-year top, and the other market is going to be legitimate. At this particular moment in time, I can tell you that I do not know which market is going to be legitimate as far as the breakout. We have a lot of hints that it looks like the stock market wants to have the legitimate breakout and gold wants to have, let's say, a sizable final rally toward the 2,500 level, and that maybe that ends up being a significant top for gold. However, I'm not stamping that forecast yet. The market still has to show me. There's still a possibility here for the breakout to actually favor gold, in which case my initial target, 2,500, would represent only a, a stop-off point before much higher prices. So in sum, I think we get new nominal all-time highs in both gold and stocks when we look into calendar year 2024. And from that point, we have to follow these charts like hawks because one of those markets is going to be sustained in its breakout and one is going to succumb and that move is going to represent a final top. Well, Christopher, that is a fascinating big picture view of how these two markets could evolve next year, both the general equities and gold to potential new all-time highs, but that one of them is going to have a legitimate follow through and keep blasting higher. And the other one may be having a final blow off top. Let's take both scenarios real quick. Walk us through if it is general equities rolling over, there is a school of thought that many people believe to see a secular bull market in gold, you need to see a bear market in equities. That would be if uh, equities make their final blow off and gold keeps going. But let's really focus more on the other side of it. If it's gold's final blast higher and it gets up to 2,500 and some change, what could happen to the stocks in that environment? Because we haven't seen a lot of traction in the mining stocks thus far where gold's been tapping three times on the $2,000, $2,100 door. But you brought up some fascinating charts from the period of the 70s where the stocks did the same kind of thing and consolidated, but they did have an epic final blast higher. Yeah, so let's talk about this, and, and let's not mince words here. The underperformance in the gold and silver miners here, even as gold is sideways, it's flat over the last few years, it's really terrible how much underperformance there has been. I mean, to define it, a lot of the mid-tier gold and silver mining companies are down 50, 60, 70, 80 percent, even as gold and silver themselves are plus or minus sideways by a few percentage points over the last few years. And that is largely due to sentiment. You know, it's been my observation, both as an investor and also as a publisher of research, that the worst sentiment, the worst backdrop for sentiment in the markets is sideways price action. We actually have a lot more interest in the sector when gold and silver are moving lower compared to sideways type price action. So anyway, that's what we've seen here over the last three years. What's absolutely fascinating is that there are a lot, of course, not 100%, but there are a lot of analogies from the bull market, as you said, Chad, in the 1970s that hold up to today. We're never going to have every single twist and turn match a prior bull market. But these analogies are absolutely incredible especially when you're talking about the underperformance in a lot of the mining stocks that happened throughout the late 1970s and then the catch-up effect that these stocks had into the final wave higher in gold as, as gold peaked into early 1980. So if I can just walk you through it, let me, let me just give a narrative here for two of these examples so that listeners can quantify in their minds what actually happened in the 1970s, and then remember what we're talking about compared to today, where a lot of these stocks are down 60, 70, 80 percent, even as the metals are sideways. And the question is, what could happen when we're looking into the final wave in gold? So let me just set the backdrop here. In the 1970s, 
Gold, of course, had its initial run from 35 when it broke the uh, the standard when Nixon severed the link between gold and the dollar in 1971. Gold then rose up to approximately $200. Let's use round figures, $200 in 1974 before falling nearly 50% back to 100 in 1976. And then it took another two years to break that 200 figure. So gold didn't break 200, the peak that was set in 1974. It didn't break that level until 1978, late 1978, in fact. And from the time that it broke out in 1978, gold then quadrupled. It went to over $850 in basically 15 months after it broke out. So just to describe what happened in that backdrop, if we look at one of the premier gold mining companies at that time, let's look at Newmont. Newmont was actually trading back in the 1970s, which is fantastic if you want to understand what can happen here after these mining stocks have underperformed for so long due to sentiment, and then what can happen into a final wave, even if this is a final wave in gold. So listen to this. In 1974, when gold peaked at $200 per ounce, Newmont was trading up in the $16 per share range. As gold declined back to 100 and then recovered back to 200 into 1978. So in other words, gold is flat when we look at the period from 1974 to 1978. It did a big round trip back to 200. Newmont actually fell by 65% in that period of time as gold was flat. Newmont fell from $14 a share down to $6 per share. And then as gold broke out from 1978, late 78, into the peak in 1980, Newmont tripled in basically the final year and a half of the bull market. Newmont tripled to play catch up as a lot of those people that sold on the frustration of gold moving sideways for four years flooded back into the market and you had all this hot money come back into the market and, and chase it. So a tripling in the last year and a half after all that underperformance. Let's look at one more example here and then we'll remember the, the current period. Let's talk about silver now. Silver moved from approximately $1.50 per ounce in 1971 up to 6 $6 per ounce in 1974. It then moved sideways until late 1978. We're talking the very end, October of 1978. Silver was plus or minus a dollar flat, still trading at $6 per ounce, following which it broke out and moved up to $50 per ounce in the year 1980. We have data for 